Welcome to the MetPro Method Podcast. I'm your host, Crystal O'Keefe. Today, I am joined by MetPro coach, Jessie Davis, and uh, she picked one of her uh, rock star clients to join us to talk about golf and MetPro. So, Jesse, tell us who we have here. Yes, yes. For He's, he's pretty famous in our MetPro world. Uh, this is Sam. He has been with me for three years, since 2019, and he's helped others. He's paid it forward and he's transformed his life and helped, helped others along the way. And he's made golf look easy. So <laughs> I'll have to tell you, not, not just coming from him, but all the, all the Navy buddies and everybody that's like, man, he just, he's got his snacks on hand. He's got a sandwich and he's ready to go. And so when we thought about golf, I was like, well, why not just get the, the best client that has navigated it for three years to do it? <laughs> <laughs> Sam's our golf met pro expert. I love it. <laughs> there we Surprise. go. Well, I'm not sure I'm either a golf expert, but probably a little mix of both. A golf expert, 14 handicap doesn't say that. But uh, <laughs> Well, you don't want to know what mine is. So. <laughs> Golf is being golf or dangerous. Let's just say that. Well, Sam, Jesse, I really appreciate both of you being here today. So, so Sam, you obviously play golf. Jesse, do you play golf as well? Yes, I do. Yeah, we. Uh, he's. I definitely am not as good as him, and I have not been to half the courses around the world that he has. <laughs> Uh, okay. So you, if you guys, okay, let me just be transparent. I have attempted to play golf. It did not go well. So I gave up quickly because it's not a natural for me, not a natural fit. Um, so I don't know even the basics. How long is a typical game of golf? What I know is there's nine rounds and there's 18 or nine yeah. holes. And 18 yeah. Holes. <laughs> nine holes and 18 holes. Typically you play 18 holes and it takes about it should take you about four hours, a little over. <laughs> it should. It yes. should. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you walk, here's the thing: if you walk, it's about a five or seven mile walk. Really? It's that yeah. many miles? I mm -hmm. was curious how many steps. You have a? Do you know offhand? I guess is that like oh, twenty three thousand steps. Uh, great question. I, you know what? I can find the answer to that for you from <laughs> friends of mine that count their steps. I don't. <laughs> well, Man. and if the the better you are, the shorter the walk. Right, so. Oh, well, sure, because it goes right to the, in theory, it goes right to the little hole. Is that what they call Absolutely. it? The little hole? Yeah. <laughs> the hole, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, so, so it's not that the golf course is five to seven miles. It's all the walking back and forth between the, the different holes and like where you shoot from. Is that what you say? Shoot? <laughs> I know. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, golf course. You hit a ball. What, Six thousand yards. So was that about three miles in itself? Oh wow! I didn't even know it was that big. Okay, that actually is a fun fact. Didn't know that. Oh, yeah. it's just a big zigzag course. You go back and forth and back and forth. Whether yeah. it's on the same hole or whether it's on, you know, each hole. <laughs> Well, so, so Jesse, you said, Sam, you said, Jesse said that you've been to golf courses all over the world. Like, are you are, now I've talked to a lot of marathoners and they like to do like all the different marathon courses. Is that kind of like what you're doing with golf courses? You go to all the famous golf courses or do you just travel a lot? Well, so there's usually a group of folks and someone comes up with an idea or runs into an opportunity. And like we most recently went to Scotland. Oh, wow. uh, in Northern Ireland. And it was a friend of mine that uh, actually his brother pushed together the trips. Um, and uh, uh, the trip came, came available when we went to some really great golf courses in Northern Ireland and uh, Scotland. Turnberry, uh... Troon, Ports, Ports Rush, uh, really great places. Wow. I've seen pictures of golf courses in Ireland and they appeared to be the most beautiful that I've ever seen in my life. They were like the ones that I saw. I have no idea if it's the same place that they were like they had like the cliffs behind them, like these giant cliffs behind them. Oh, and yeah, then yeah. There was this like amazing golf course happening right in front of the cliffs. Is that is that one of the places you went? Well, we didn't go there, <laughs> but you're probably describing this place called Old Head in Ireland, which is really um, amazing. Um, but uh we went to some similar golf courses up in, in Northern Ireland and, and Scotland. Wow. That's really cool. Do you, have you, um, so do you make it kind of, this is like a yearly thing. You go to different golf courses in the world. Well, no, not necessarily. I hope it is moving forward. This is a unique opportunity. <laughs> I'd like it to be. He's like, newsflash, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, but just just as you mentioned something, so every year I get together with a bunch of college buddies. It's twenty four of us now. We pick uh-huh. a course somewhere, uh, course or courses, and we go for a weekend. The weekend before Father's Day. Okay. And the funny thing is, um, those guys saw me shrink from year to year on MetPro. So I think Jess, Jess got a lot of business from that. Um, yes. <laughs> your hard work paid off for me. And it is an interesting... What's that? Sorry? I said, your hard work paid off for me. <laughs> ah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it paid off for me, too. I got to, you know, show off a of little course. bit. Of course. <laughs> Hopefully it improved your golf game. It did as well. Yeah. Right. yeah, I'm curious about that. I I want definitely want to talk about that. So when you go golfing, if you're out there for that long, do you do you take food with you? I mean, you should be eating on Metro every two to two to three hours. I know, I know. So do you <laughs> do you take the food? How do you oh, how do you abso- make that work? Absolutely. So I I typically play every Saturday a local course, um, and bring uh, a snack for the. You know, the, the third hole, I'm hitting a snack. So I'm, we're usually taking off about nine. So that okay. it, that's about 1030 for me. <laughs> and then I grab my uh, my apple, my two pieces of string cheese, and then uh, play the front nine. And usually that's lunchtime. And I'll have my, my go-to is a, a bag of carrots and a uh, ham sandwich on a whole wheat muffin that has about six ounces of, six ounces of ham on it. Very so that, nice. That's my go-to. It stays well in the bag, and and then RX bars are always your friend. So, <laughs> I, I, I in my golf bag, I have a box of RX bars. <laughs> That's great, and it's I mean, extra weight when he's when he's walking. Right? So it's like it does double duty. It feeds, it fuels him, and it adds a little bit of extra. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's i mean you you do jesse's right you make that sound easy like you, like oh it's no big deal i just pack a sandwich but i mean i talk to people all the time who are like it's difficult to think about what your day is going to look like especially on the weekend because we all just kind of want to relax on the weekend and so it's hard to be like right. i need to i need to plan ahead i need to make a, a concentrated effort to put food in a side so that i can make sure and and get that done so um, that's really cool. I love, I love that you do that. Now, how do you, how do you make sure that you stay hydrated while you're out there? Oh, well, where we typically play, there's a cart that goes around so I can grab a, a water or sparkling, you know, sparkling water is my go-to. Um, but there's, there's water. What's your favorite flavor? What's your favorite flavor, Sam? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm a, I like I'm the orange. sparkling water. The orange, all right. Oh, orange. Learned what is things. polar mandarin? On, or that, that's my favorite. Yeah. The mandarin does, orange, I like it. Does it taste like a, a an orange Fanta? That's what I imagine. I want it. Yeah, I want it to taste like an not, orange Fanta. Not pure sweet, but it, okay. It's, it, it's cool. And it I'll shouldn't. That's fair. <laughs> So, so when you're golfing with other people and they, they see you like pulling out your snacks and your lunch, like, are they also eating or are they just waiting? Like, are they like, what's wrong with you? Or are they like, that's great. What kind of well, feedback do you get? One friend I talked to in the, into the program. So we used to do that together for a while. He's off of it or sort of moved on. <laughs> He's not snacking uh, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so he knows what I'm doing, but no, typically there's a comment or two, uh, the, the fun one is about the carrots, you know, so when I, I like to eat raw carrots with, with the sandwich and, you know, everybody, I get asked if I'm in second grade again, which is <laughs> to me a good comment. But. I, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. I At least it's not like some kind of Bugs Bunny kind of comment. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, does Jesse, do you have Sam do like particular workouts that are like specific to golf? Do you guys ever work on that? Uh, well, I mean, I would definitely say that he knows golf is the best exercise for golf. You can't really, you know, mimic those kind of things uh, unless you have like really specific equipment. But what MetPro does is all whole, whole body, right? So we're doing full range of motion. We're doing, and that's what you need for golf. You need full range of motion when you're working your shoulders, when you're working your legs. And so every, you know, whether or not I have them doing a three day split or, you know, cross training or circuit training, all of those workouts combined are going to have the, impact that we need and stretching stretching is huge which he knows he could probably do a little bit better with <laughs> he's, always <laughs> running, he's always running out of the gym and i'm like did you get those stretches in <laughs> she knows um, about that? <laughs> that's right warm-ups so, and stretches i have problems with. oh yeah 
Both are important. Both are important, especially. But, but working with guests, I mean, I lost, initially I lost about 50 pounds, actually a little bit over. Um, I put some of that back on. Uh, I think I put it on the right way with muscle. and But uh, my range of motion increased dramatically uh, using the program. Really? So, That's awesome. Yeah. Is that, so it, is that it from. It changed my swing a bit. Um, and if we were kidding before, it got a little worse and now it's better. So. <laughs> had to adjust to the weight loss <laughs> i was gonna say is that because you lost weight and so you kind of had to like find your new center of balance and like all of that or was there more to yeah it? absolutely and, and i think you just without all that weight you get more comfortable sort of you know winding up and, and sure uh, um stretching back so it, it definitely changed the swing a little bit to the to the better that makes sense do you, um, and so I assume you add strength to your workouts at some point? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy lifting weights. I actually, just Jess was saying the three day splits, I enjoy doing those. When it's, so, when, and I'm when sure that helps up. with your golf too, like the power and everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Congratulations. Arm strength, um, hip strength and core strength are, yes. are three components of a good swing. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Cause you want everything to be really tight. I assume whenever mm -hmm. you're swinging, um, right. Do, do, congratulations on on losing 50 pounds that's no easy feat especially <laughs> especially um over time because we 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 make you really work for that whenever we have all the ups and downs that we do <laughs> so <laughs> everyone knows it is not a quick process <laughs> no. exactly exactly <laughs> So um, how about how about injuries? You were talking about like you have to have the core strength, you have to have the hip strength. Are there like certain injuries that golfers are prone to? Yeah, I mean, back injuries for sure. So losing the weight and stretching definitely helps with that. Knee injuries are, are I think, common, especially with – so I'm, you, you talk about pro golfers. They probably have back injuries. Us older guys, we're worried about our knees and our joints and stuff like that. So um, stretching, less weight, um, I, and, you know, we talked about walking. I Walking actually helps you sort of warm up and – and stay warm during the round. So I think that 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 actually helps um, preclude from from injuries. So is I that, think that's a great point about walking. I know I know a lot of people want to drive because it's quicker, mm -hmm. but if you think about it, you actually probably will have a better golf game if you are yes. walking because you're really? warmed up and mm -hmm. so think about it. <laughs> I am. I am thinking about yeah. it. It's interesting. And in so, Scotland, most yeah. of those courses were caddied, and you had to walk. So oh really? Uh, oh yeah. So the real guys, oh the guys that play real golf, that invented golf, <laughs> they do it with a walk. That's how you do it. <laughs> I didn't know that. I watch I watch golf on like the only golf I see is whatever's in movies. So I just see the little cat, the little, <laughs> little... I gotta watch Bagger Vans. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <Take it> back. <laughs> the little golf carts. I've heard many a story of alcohol on the golf course that did not end well in those golf carts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk about that peer pressure, Sam. What kind of peer pressure do you get on the golf course and how do you maybe uh, minimize the damage when you feel pressured. You mean with the eating? <laughs> with eating or drinking. Yeah. Like the, I call it the 19th hole, right? Oh, what happens yeah. after well, the 18th that, yep. hole? <laughs> there you go. That's a problem. Um, I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's nice. So one of the, I have a, a private club and I have an arrangement with the bartender. He knows to hand me a, a soda water with a lime. <laughs> it makes that's awesome like that now so your secret's that. out <laughs> <laughs> they'll actually get make my ham sandwich for me too if i forget so there's that too. oh my gosh that's people. great see yeah. use your use what you've got around you people are there to help right right <laughs> but i mean sometimes you just you know sometimes you want to drink so uh <laughs> um you know i my go-to is a vodka and soda if 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 uh i'm sitting around and really want to have one and break the rules I try to record it when I do. I try. I heard I, I try. try. <laughs> and I had, I had to uh, confess when I was over in Scotland to or Ireland to, to Jess that I had a Guinness or two after 18 holes. Okay, but I, I don't know about Fair. what Jesse said. But I was going to say, like, you got to, you're in Ireland, you're in Scotland. You got to, you got to try the local. Uh, oh, absolutely. It tastes yeah. different over there. It yeah. does. That's what I've heard. <laughs> 
I'm not saying anything, but it's just like having a Sierra Nevada at the Sierra Nevada Brewery in Chico. Yeah. Like, there's just nothing like it. <laughs> Ru- rumor had it, 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 it's 95 calories. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a Guinness? <laughs> a Guinness. A pork chop and a glass. <laughs> Maybe that first drink. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. So you do, you do get kind of like uh, the comments and a little bit of the peer pressure. Do you, so you have kind of workarounds. Do you ever like um, some people you've clearly educated because you've brought them on oh, yeah. to, to MetPro. So it sounds like you have a lot of tools that you use when you're out there. Well, and also I think I've been doing this a while. It's not new news to people. <laughs> that I do, so. Um, you know, and and uh, they're used to me pulling out my carrots on the uh, on the ninth hole, and you know, pulling out my arcs more on the third hole. So, and then, quite honestly, that's how I time it. I don't even look at a watch, so I know third <laughs> hole is ten thirty. I, I know ninth hole is around twelve o'clock, and that's when I uh, pull out the uh, pull out the goods. I love the routine. That's fantastic. Now, what about when you were traveling um, and and when you've traveled in the past? Like, do you take your snacks with you? Do you just find things like at the airport or whatever that are compliant? How do you handle that? Yeah, so I think the meals are kind of tough. But again, I, a box of RX bars has, has been my friend. Apples and string cheese. And if the string cheese doesn't keep, you know, you can find cheese locally. So apples and cheese and, and RX bars are some of my go-to snacks. Um, the meals you kind of got to, you know, work with. Sometimes you can, you can make your own on the road. Um, other times you sort of got to work with the halfway house at the, on the, on the course or um, the clubhouse on the course to see what you can get. But mm-hmm. actually in, 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 in Ireland um, overseas, it, it wasn't bad. There was always a seafood dish available with a, with a vegetable side. You sort of guess at the, at the, at the uh, at the portions um and uh the hardest thing over there was the vegetables um they think they think potatoes are a vegetable in, in Ireland. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. I have, I have an apostrophe in my name and let me tell you, everybody in this house eats a lot of, a lot of potatoes. (laughs) (laughs) I would say, I was going to ask one thing because when you had mentioned Sam about how this is just part of your lifestyle, you know, they, they, you know, people that know you, you've been, as soon as you learned it, you were hooked. You were like, yep, this is how I'm going to golf. Oh, yeah. Why was that? Right. Did you, you know, obviously share with the, with the people listening, you know, what was it that made that consistency of food uh, important to you? I, well, I saw the results and, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure my story, but you know, weight it. has always been a weight and staying in shape and staying healthy has always been um, important and a challenge to me. And I, Back, to go back even further, I was in the Marine Corps. I was in great shape. Um, started living a lifestyle without the constant working out that the Marine Corps provides, and got a little out of shape. Um, and I found a way through MetPro and Jess to to manage that, and I saw the results. So it's not hard to uh, to continue the routine once you see and feel the results. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. I- I think that's important for people to realize it's not anything crazy. It's not like you're looking at it saying, Hey, I'm going to do this for 30 days. or I'm going to do this until I reach my goals. It's like, Hey, I'm going to create a new lifestyle for myself where I feel better and I have energy. And that sometimes means I have to plan ahead and I have to take snacks on the golf course um, Mm -hmm. and not just say, and you listeners know who I'm saying out there that say, Oh, I'm golfing today. I can't have my snacks. I think of Sam and I'm like, well, Sam can have them. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's a great point. And and Jesse, I'm I'm curious, like, as you you've worked with Sam for three years, that's a long time to work with a client. What kind of coaching? How has your coaching of Sam evolved over yeah. time? Yeah, well, obviously, way more hands on when you get started. So the first year, I'm I'm bugging him every day to make sure he's taking care of business. And <laughs> then as as he's attested, right, he takes care of business. And so then it's more of me just keeping him accountable and making sure that he's taking those snacks. That's probably the thing he probably gets the most sick about me. You got your snacks? You got your snacks <laughs> on you? Um, <laughs> and it's so interesting because I think that's the easiest way for somebody to be interested in his new lifestyle, in his new way of eating, right? So it's like, oh, all of a sudden, Sam's been eating snacks all the time and he's all he's losing all this weight and looks great and feels great. And he's got this zest to him again, you know, or whatever. 
Uh, and I think that that's important because I tell people, if you can't do anything else, just like pack a snack, <laughs> just have that on you, no matter where you're at in your day, just plan ahead and it really will make you feel better. Promise. <laughs> it's That's true. Sam, have you always been a planner? Have you always been per a person who like thinks ahead about what you're going to be doing or, or is, is that something? Oh, in, that, like... in terms of food? Absolutely yeah. not. I mean, okay. in terms of work, yes, but you know, once you sort of equate a goal and again, seeing the results, repeating the process that gives you the results doesn't it's it's not a hard thing once you know it's going to work okay but but just devil's advocate here if what how did how did she convince you to try it before you had the results like what made you like okay i'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot like what made you Quite like a, i saw and met another client uh -huh. and saw what he ate for lunch and asked the question okay what are you doing and uh, I knew him before, knew him after. And then, well, Jess can test. She, I, she says 20. It's probably around that number. But pre-COVID, yeah, yeah. um, I started the program, come out of COVID, see everybody six mm -hmm. months later. And I'm, you know, 75% uh, of the size that I was. Uh, a lot of That's folks incredible. say, what are you doing? What is that? And meanwhile, I'm eating apples and cheese and grapes <laughs> and and uh, Real food ham all the, time. the cam sandwiches <laughs> yeah those folks are like what are you doing so uh, i i really think you, you this is a sustainable um predictable and doable process and once yep. you see somebody i saw somebody that had results people saw me have results and uh, as jess said paying it forward is kind of fun it is. Yeah. It's it's cool to see all the it's cool to see like the the positive effects that the chain can bring. Like you're you've brought all these people to MetPro. I'm sure they've brought other people to MetPro or just educated them about what it is they're doing. Um, what have have you been a person who has like struggled with your weight in the past, or were you the type of person that like never struggled and all of a sudden you were struggling? I I definitely I, it's been a lifelong struggle for me starting when I was a kid and then in the military, oh, I was a runner. I worked out all the time. So it was less of a problem during that period. Cause you know, obviously I, you work out like crazy when you're in the military, uh, especially the Marine Corps. Yeah. And then when I got out, you, 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 you know, you don't have time to work out three hours a day or two right. hours a day, whatever it was. So it started coming back on and I've tried multiple things to manage it. And, uh, and this one, it, it, like I said, it's sustainable and it works. Yeah. What do you, what do you think is more sustainable about MetPro than other programs you've tried? Oh, it, it, the, the energy level that the eating program gives you and yeah. then the ability other, you know, just cutting out carbs, obviously somebody who tried that, did that, it actually works in the short term, but you have no energy to keep up your workout routine. Mm -hmm. So yep. this this was sort of an, an an amazing recipe to me of how how this can work and and changing the metabolism even if you miss if you if you've done it appropriately or I know Jess and I talked the goal was really sort of eighty five percent or better if you're hitting that eighty five percent and you're you're missing here and there um, you can you can get right back on the on the on the bicycle and, and keep going and that's that I think that's unique about that program. I definitely agree. Jesse, uh, what about for you as far as like um, coaching Sam, are there different when when you you said you you talked about how you evolved your coaching with him, but like everybody has a different style of things that motivate them. Was there any like key to your coaching that <clears throat> was that you found super helpful for Sam as a motivator mm, that I'm that I'm aware of? Um, I <laughs> that you I want to tell him <laughs> I, I hope to i hope to think i asked the right questions to make him become more aware of his choices and how they were leading to a better golf game and weight loss and better range of motion and more energy and you know all these things um because you know he's very fortunate to have seen quick weight loss right out of the gate to get that like oh let me you know like okay i'm gonna keep doing it uh, and not everybody sees that. So I know I hear those listeners out there. They're like, well, I haven't lost anyway. Um, but you feel better. I guarantee you every single person out there 
that have started eating better and has started their, you know, breakfast and snacks and, you know, all these just simple, clean foods. Like it doesn't have to be complicated unless you're a chef and you want it to be right. Teach their own. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. Jeff told me a couple things. One was that, that had me on the hook was we're going to get you eating again. Like, oh. Oh, eyes popped, popped there open. Yes, more more food, <laughs> and and it was true. I was eating the wrong way and was not eating enough. And yeah. that uh, learning point. that was was uh, was tremendous. And then Jess ha ha has a great way of letting you know what's coming. So get through this, and you get to the next step. Get through this. We'll get you on the weights. Get th through this. We'll get you, you know, uh, doing more cardio. And uh, that knowing what that goal is and the next step and, and seeing again, continuing to see uh, uh, success and progress was, was great. Well, Jess that's is obviously point. an awesome coach. So <laughs> she, she, that's great. I, I like that Jess, you explain things to people. I think, I think some people need to know the, the why, but they also sometimes need to know the what's coming. So you kind of have that, that hook of like, keep going, keep going, don't mm -hmm. give up. And so it's, it's good to use both of those. It's awesome. Yeah. We talk about the big picture a lot. We talk about trends and we talk about where were we last month and where were we six months ago. And, you know, that's that's why it's hard to look at the day to day data, especially for women, because it is going to go up when it, I mean, women are going to be more volatile on that scale than men. And so we just have to, you know, really take it in that big picture and see it and be like, oh, OK, I got it. This is this is what I'm going to do. And you know, we cycle at MetPro. So for those that are not familiar with MetPro, we do carb cycling where we go up and then we drop you. And so that's where we create our contrast. And so <clears> that's <throat> really, if you can understand that and say, hey, you're going to be eating a ton and not losing weight. And I know you're paying us because you want to lose weight. <laughs> like we know that, right? But it, everything's going to work out. Everything. So you just got to, yeah, just keep on eating. And so yeah. that's why I think helping educate and painting that bigger picture is helpful. Some good point. So taking it back to, to kind of golf, is there, did you notice, you said you noticed a change in your golf game. Did you notice a energy change? Like, like, were you ever exhausted when you were out on the golf course and then you started eating with Met Pro and that was like more energy or was there any other kind of change like that? Yeah, I, definitely with golf over time. So golf's a sport you can play your, your lifetime, right? So when I was younger, it was always just grab the clubs, go out you know, essentially run from hold all, then it's walk, <laughs> then it's, oh, maybe I'll take the cart today because I don't feel that good. And, and I, I guess the, the, the one, as, as I progressed in, in Metro, you know, I, I had less pains in my knees and in my feet um, and those sorts of things. So I felt better about, you know, walking the course than taking the cart. Oh, that's um, great so it, it, it just uh, so that, that that's probably the biggest change. Um, the the swings a little different because I have a bigger range of motion. I'm still learning to control it. <laughs> but that's again a lifelong thing. Comes and goes. We're always learning to control that swing. <laughs> <laughs> And, and to your point, you know, there's there's energy left at the end of a round, which I'm not sure was the case three four years ago. Yeah, I mean, walking that much and swinging and using all the energy for at least four hours, like that's a lot of energy to expend. So that's yeah. great that you have energy left over. So yeah, think of that stamina from from when you were in Scotland, right? Because you were going back to back on those courses too. the recovery yeah. that we have to have to continue to push ourselves. That, that It only comes from our food, right? How else are we going to recover? So. Absolutely. Yeah. Did were you on a high carb cycle when you went to uh, Ireland? Did she have? Yes, put me on a high carb <laughs> cycle going into Scotland, and I, you know, like as, as we just talked about, put on a little bit of weight over there, uh, a lot less than I would have suspected, given the number of Guinness that I chose. <laughs> I thought it was only one or two. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety-five <laughs> calories. <laughs> I sense a shift. <laughs> but, but I was able to get right back on cycle when I came back. So that's great. awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I think that's a very powerful piece of the puzzle as well. It's that, that cycling of everything that we do. It's just it's seeing the ups and the downs you get a break from. You don't always have to be restricting. You don't always have to be. And whenever you do do something that's off plan, if you have a little already kind of built up, it's not nearly as like detrimental to what you're trying to do. Uh, exactly. I know I was yep. blown away the first time I saw that happen. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what about, um, is there, is there anything that, 
we've missed kind of between talking about MetPro or golf that either of you want to make sure that listeners know about? No, I just, program works. It's doable. You know, going out playing 18 holes of golf is not an excuse to come off cycle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If anything, and, I encourage people to walk, right? Just put that card away and, and walk. And if you hurt and you can't walk, call us. <laughs> <laughs> You gonna take them out there? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, that would be so sweet if I could take my clients out and like personally, I would not be the one to instruct golf. That would be <laughs> I would make sure they have their snacks. I'd be like, here are your snacks. I'd be the caddy. The caddy with snacks. <gasps> yeah, that's All a right. good idea. <laughs> I just thought of something. <laughs> Well, thank you both so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, listeners, that's all for this week. You can find all of the MetPro Method episodes anywhere you get podcasts, or you can go to metpro.co slash podcast. Please be sure to follow and follow the show and rate and review. That lets other people know what they can expect. You can learn more about MetPro at metpro.co. I'm your host, Crystal O'Keefe, and I will be back next week. Until then, remember, consistency is key.